So welcome, Fred and Siggy. It's a real pleasure to have you here in Los Angeles, this gorgeous space. I know a little bit about you. I know that you're both true creative powerhouses in your own right. Um, so I truly admire what you have created as creators in your own field. Um, I'm honored to be here on behalf of Petima to share with you as an example of your own paths with our audience how you got to where you are and learn a little bit about you, what your creative endeavors and ambitions currently are, how do you envision yourself to express even further into the future and share with our viewers a little bit about how you can hack, how you can fast forward your creative path by sharing a few principles that I as a creative coach found useful in the audiences and the people that I've worked with in the past. <laughs> Does that sound like a yeah. Yeah, like good use just, of time? I was just thinking that it's been a pretty rocky and painful road to be at the creative point where I'm at right now. I'm sure you would say the same thing because when you're 18, 19 and you choose the life outside the structures, it's, there are a lot of years that are very poor and very painful. And now finally, when I'm 40, <laughs> I'm starting to be able to swim mm. in this situation and breathe. So for me, I'm very, very thankful right now, but it's been a long, I would say terrible time mm. <laughs> for it's 22 to, years. It's easy to breathe and swim and relax when you have yeah. Beverly Hills, the most expensive part of Beverly Hills underneath you, flying above. 100%. And it's like cheating. Yeah, and there's actually some um, creative dynamics or rules almost. Um, it's like a birthing process, you know, mm -hmm. that's um, creativity. I mean, we are all being born. Uh, our own first act of creativity, our experience of birth, is a struggle of life and death. So there's something built into the creative process that is both exhilarating and exciting and life-giving, as mm -hmm. well as extremely fear-inducing and threatening. And we could go deeper into that field. The German poet Rilke used to say that our greatest treasures are guarded by our deepest fears. Mm -hmm. So by having the courage to go for after our deepest treasures, our full creative expression, it also involves the courage to face our deepest fears, to face our demons. And that is usually um, something that uh, people um, try to avoid mm -hmm. and that's why so people give up on their creative journey and yes. it takes usually a brave soul that is so driven by their mission by their gift they want to share with the world that we go through these areas of hardship um, and our viewers who are going to go on their creative journey they will have their own smaller version and I think it's really wonderful to hear from you that it's worth to go also through the valleys and at the other end that there is yeah, you know, a the full expression. The big difference is when you're young, as a writer anyway, you, the, the paper is not white. You see a structure, you think that you write, novels are supposed to be written in a certain way, that stories are supposed to be told in a certain way, so the paper already has a structure that you're trying to fill. You're trying to trace the contour. Mm. With age, the paper has become more and more white. I have more and more respect for the whiteness of the paper. Beautiful. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm. Do you feel the same? Mm. So, uh, Fred, I wanted to ask you, uh, you are a very creative person, obviously, with a huge following. Um, you did amazing work in the world. Um, the question I wanted to ask you, um, and you spoke about that white, blank canvas um, and we speak about you know, the field of infinite possibilities that life presents to us if we are open to it. I would love to hear from you how do you envision yourself let's say if time and money were not restrictions how would you envision yourself you know fully expressed in your own creativity in let's say about five years what mm -hmm. what do you dream of in your own creative path? Um, well, I think when I was young and still to some extent creativity to me was to maybe impress um, the world around me or create um, or put out a creativity that would be 
admired or uh, appreciated at least in some capacity. For me, at that time, creativity, um, to be creative, you had to be admired. Now, later in life, and hopefully in five years, when especially time is, um, I have unlimited time, um, I think for me it's more in here. Um, and that's what meditation has done, obviously. You, you, you've, you become very creative on the inside, and there's no outside world that matters. But wouldn't you also so, say, sorry, but wouldn't you also say that you and I had the luxury to get that need for attention out of our system when we became sort of celebrities. I mean, it's I mean, very easy to like. Yes, yeah. but I think it's it's a it's a to me writing and making movies or um, being on television or painting those are all creative juices. But you can't in my life you can't compare them at all to some of the things that I feel or create on the inside. So I have a constant dialogue with myself or the universe or the creator, whatever you want to call it, in the meditation. And then because I do it so much, uh, sometimes twice a day, it goes on. You just you just change. So mm -hmm. that's my answer. If I had unlimited money and unlimited time and I was the highest creator, creating force I could ever be, I'd probably sit in a park bench and with my eyes closed. Or maybe like this here. We meet here in five years, mm -hmm. naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of a project or an idea that you wish to birth or maybe as a gift to the world? Something how you would see yourself fully expressed beside sitting on a park bench being at peace? I mean, I've always dreamt of a very large family, which is so nice now my brother lives here with all the kids. But mm. I think that's later, in, late, much later than five years, the ultimate uh, creative power would be done to I always had this vision of myself being like white hair and very tanned leather skin uh, old leather with skin. with a big sun hat under an apple tree and see all the kids running around all the grandkids like and all the dogs and the family and maybe you we can find a chair for you too that everyone <laughs> I'll join you everyone <laughs> is together and mm. you, that would be the is ultimate create creative mm -hmm. yeah is that us recreating something that we never got we never had that big family thing when we were kids. Yeah. I'm just asking you because I've always looked forward to the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sort of me at the short end of the table Drunk. and then kids and, and grandkids and beautiful. a big family. Beautiful. Yeah. So let's just work with that. Let's, you know, it's a beautiful um, image. I think yeah, that is. that Vision. I can relate mm -hmm. to. I imagine that you a can lot fast, of people fast to can, can uh, imagine, you know, to sit around uh, under an apple tree or on a long table like an Italian setting with beautiful food and three generations of children yeah. and you know family life and the sense of wholeness and community right mm -hmm. and usually we postpone that into the future as something like once i'm retired once i'm right. there so the number one that a few creative principles that i want to share with you basically how you can create that scenario mm -hmm. um, right now right here so number one is the biggest mistake that most people do when they want to create something is the simple question is how do I get there? And the simple question of asking how immediately puts us subconsciously into a state where we're telling ourselves that we don't know, that we don't already have the answers by asking how. You know, and then we go outside of ourselves, we research experts, we ask other people who have found their path, and then we lean out of our own center. You know, we are, we are telling ourselves that I don't have the answers. The act of asking how already puts us out of our own power. Mm, interesting. And a more powerful, a more creative approach is to embrace the reality that who we truly are, and this is backed by quantum physics and new studies about the nature of time that the understanding of linear time is just a concept it helps us to navigate through this three-dimensional world but through meditation and through also quantum physics we can connect to a state where linear time collapses where the past the present and the future already is here the future already exists as a potential right here, right now. 
Actually, and the I very, let me just finish yeah, that thought, sorry. And the very <laughs> scenario that we just described to sit under this apple tree is already here as a mm -hmm. potential. Obviously, it hasn't manifested in 3D reality, but it's already here. And uh, powerful visionaries and creators have found this ability to already put themselves into that state mm -hmm. and to feel literally emotionally, physically, spiritually what it's like to be that person because the universe doesn't respond to what we want but who we are you know the kind of frequency the kind of radio waves that we are emanating are being brought back to us you know that's the world that surrounds us our own echo I love that idea because you know sometimes when I've been on the bus or the subway I have a meditation um, what do you call it practice that I do for myself I look at everyone in in the van and I think to myself that I have been or will become every one of these people mm. so mm. there might be an old man there's a five-year-old and it gives me so much peace I think it's inspired what you're saying is they are related these two ideas right that I can see that I will become or have been all of these people it gives me a big sense of calmness beautiful beautiful I think what you're describing is the sense that in our expanded sense of self, where we go beyond our own limited story, in the expanded self, we can actually see ourselves in everyone, mm -hmm. you know, in the old and the, the, exactly. the young, and there's a seed of us in everyone, which then creates compassion. And Thich Nhat Hanh speaks about a state of interbeing, mm -hmm. you know, where we feel compassion, a connection with everyone and also derive information and inspiration from everyone outside of ourselves. So maybe it's just a mini practice I want to share with you right now and also for our audience um, to stay with this beautiful image of the three generational gathering under an apple tree. Let's just close our eyes for a moment and I imagine to just place yourself under that apple tree. And our audience, I invite you to just come along to take a seat on this large table. Just imagine the white, comfort. White cloth. Lots white of cloth. Rose wine. Laughter. Very tanned. Big sun hats. Some wine. A lot of wine. Just allow yourself to let this scene in your inner eye to come alive the movement, the movement of the sun, the sounds, the laughter of children. If you take a deep breath in, you may even smell the subtle scent of the air. Stay with that scene. And allow yourself to feel, to be that person already. The excitement in your body, in your heart, the feeling of joy. And what you can see is that you can already be that person, feel like that man, right here, right now, without needing the apple tree, the long table, and the family. You can already be in that state, independent of outer conditions, as a self-generated state of being, which is the key to manifestation by already being in the state that you wish to achieve by cultivating this state of being so slowly invite you to come back to open your eyes Whoa. and the last thing I want to 
as an inspiration um, how, how you can bridge this inner world experience of meditation with the outer world is through a process called rapid prototyping. It's actually from the world of product development. It's an idea from MIT where you take a small imperfect action but that resembles the seed idea, the quality of what you just experienced. It could be as simple as you just arrived in Los Angeles to throw a little house party, to invite some friends over for dinner who have children, and to have a little bit of a rehearsal of an idea of putting that vision, right. that grand beautiful vision that is years ahead away into your moment right now, right here, to take action. And by doing so, you will learn something new about the people that will come. You will learn something new about yourself and see that the very thing that you anticipate for the future is available for you right now, right here. Or dress up as the... So I thank you both very much for coming here thank today, you, for uh, Fred and Siggy. Uh, I l wish we had more time. I'm sure we'll continue this. And I love the vision that you have created about meeting under an apple tree and I hope that yeah. that will come to fruition very soon for both of you.